Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Education, SOE, Master's Degree Programs, Master of Arts in Adult Education, My, Second Year, My 001 Sustainable Development, Block 1 Introduction to Sustainable Development, Unit 1 Sustainable Development, Concept and Scope, 1.0 Introduction. We all know that most societies aspire to achieve economic development to secure higher standards of living both for themselves and for future generations. They also seek to protect and enhance the quality of their environment now and for their children. Reconciling these two aspirations is at the heart of sustainable development. Sustainable development aims at meeting the basic needs of all people in general and the poor majority in particular their employment, food, energy, water, housing, etc., by ensuring the growth of agriculture, manufactures, power and services with due consideration for environmental concerns. Therefore, in this unit, we attempt to present you the concept, meaning and scope of sustainable development with focus on its purpose and dimensions, and set out some basic principles and Essential Ingredients of Good Vision for Sustainable Development 1. Objectives After studying this unit, you should be able to explain the concept and meaning of sustainable development, describe the scope and purposes of sustainable development. Appreciate the underlying principles and premises of sustainable development, analyze various dimensions of sustainable development and the need for integration of the various dimensions of sustainability and appreciate the nature of our concern for sustainable development. Concept of sustainable development Sustainable development basically merges economics and environmental science both in theoretical and practical perspectives. Several other articulations consider sustainable development as a process of development by which various environmental, economic, and social benefits can be simultaneously and concurrently maximized. These articulations suggest that sustainable development, in short, is a blend of economic, social and ecological approaches, each of these being indispensable and complementary to each other. Sustainable development, SD, is, in fact, a pattern of resource use that aims to meet human needs while preserving the environment so that these needs can be met not only for the present generation but also for generations to come. Sustainable development is a socio-ecological process characterized by the fulfillment of human needs while maintaining the quality of the natural environment indefinitely. The linkage between environment and development was globally recognized in 1980 when the International Union for the Conservation of Nature published the world. Conservation strategy and used the term sustainable development. This term has been used as a unifying theme in presenting environmental and social concerns about worrisome trends toward accelerated environmental degradation and social polarization in the 1970s and 1980s. The concept came into general usage after the Brundtland Commission Report, 1987, formally called the Report of World Commission on Environment Aid Development, WCED. WCED was set up by the United Nations General Assembly. Thus, the term sustainable development was widely adopted by mainstream development agencies following the publication in 1987 of Our Common Future by the World Commission on Environment and Development, WCED. Chaired by the then Prime Minister of Norway, Gro Harlem Brundtland. It stated that sustainable Development is development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It is now considered to be one of the most widely recognized definitions. As we can notice, it contains within it two key concepts. The concept of needs, in particular the essential needs of the world's poor, to which overriding priority should be given and the idea of limitations imposed by the state of our technology and social organization on the environment's ability to meet present and future needs.
the United Nations 2005 World Summit Outcome Document refers to economic development, social development, and environmental protection as the interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development. Many definitions and images visualizing sustainability of sustainable development may coexist. Broadly defined, the Sustainable Development Mantra enjoins current generations to take a systems approach to growth and development and to manage natural, produced and social capital for the welfare of their own and future generations. One point to point one conceptual aspects and issues, sustainable development does not focus solely on environmental aspects and issues. More broadly, sustainable development policies encompass three general policy areas. Economic, environmental and social. In support of this, several United Nations documents including the 2005 World Summit Outcome Document refer to economic development, social development and environmental protection as the interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development. Sustainable development helps in maintaining a delicate balance between the human need to improve lifestyles and feeling of well-being on the one hand and on the other hand preserving natural resources and ecosystems on which we and future generations depend. Sustainable development is an eclectic concept as a wide array of aspects and views fall under its umbrella. The concept has included notions of weak sustainability, strong sustainability and deep ecology. Different conceptions also reveal a strong tension between ecocentrism and anthropocentrism. Indigenous peoples have argued through various international forums such as the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues and the Convention on Biological Diversity that there are four pillars of sustainable development, the fourth being cultural. The Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity, UNESCO, 2001, further elaborates the concept by stating that cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature. It becomes one of the roots of development understood, not simply in terms of economic growth but also as a means to achieve a more satisfactory intellectual, emotional, moral and spiritual existence. In this vision, cultural diversity is the fourth policy area of sustainable development. Of course, it can be considered as part of social development. I. Building Blocks of Sustainability Agenda 21, an action plan of the United Nations, UN, related to sustainable development, clearly identified information, integration, and participation as key building blocks to help countries achieve development that recognizes these interdependent pillars economic development, environmental development, social development, and cultural development. It emphasizes that in sustainable development everyone is a user and provider of information. It stresses the need to change from old sector-centered ways of doing business to new approaches that involve cross-sectoral coordination and the integration of environmental and social concerns into all development processes. Furthermore, Agenda 21 emphasizes that Broad public participation in decision-making is a fundamental prerequisite for achieving sustainable development. According to Hasna Van Kok, 2007, sustainability is a process which tells of a development of all aspects of human life affecting sustenance. It means, a. It needs to resolve the conflict between the various competing goals, b. It involves the simultaneous pursuit of economic prosperity, environmental quality and social equity famously known as three dimensions, triple bottom line, with the resultant vector being technology. Hence, it is a continually evolving process, and its journey, the process of achieving sustainability, is of course vitally important, but only as a means of getting to the destination, the desired future state. However, the destination of sustainability is not a fixed place in the normal sense that we understand destination. Instead, it is a set of wishful characteristics of a future system. 2. Green Development and Sustainable Development 
Green development is generally differentiated from sustainable development in the sense that the former prioritize what its proponents consider to be environmental sustainability over economic and cultural considerations. On the other hand, the proponents of sustainable development argue that it provides a context which is to improve overall sustainability where cutting-edge green development is unattainable. For example, a cutting-edge treatment plant with extremely high maintenance costs may not sustainable in regions of the world with fewer financial resources. An environmentally ideal plant that is shut down due to bankruptcy is obviously less sustainable than the one that is maintainable by the community, even if it is somewhat less effective from an environmental standpoint, the United Nations Division for Sustainable Development lists the following areas as coming within the scope of sustainable development. Times agriculture, atmosphere, biodiversity, biotechnology, capacity building, climate change, times consumption and production patterns, demographics, desertification and drought, times disaster reduction and management, education and awareness, times energy, systems ecology, finance, forests, fresh water, times health, human settlements, indicators, industry, times information for decision-making and participation, times integrated decision-making, international law, international cooperation. For enabling environment, institutional arrangements, land management, major group, mountains, national sustainable development strategies, oceans and seas, poverty, sanitation, science, SIDS, sustainable tourism, technology, toxic chemicals, trade and environment, transport, waste, hazardous, waste, radioactive, waste, solid, waste water. During the last 10 years, different organizations have tried to measure and monitor those in proximity to what they consider sustainability by implementing what has been called sustainability matrix and indices. 3. Real Purpose Agenda of Sustainability Development Various writers have commented on the population. Control agenda that seems to underlie the concept of sustainable development. Maria Sofia Aguim, 2002, writes, Sustainable development is a policy approach that has gained quite a lot of popularity in recent years especially in international circles. By attaching a specific interpretation to sustainability, population, control policies have become the overriding approach to development, thus becoming the primary tool used to promote economic development in developing countries and to protect the environment. Mary Jo Anderson, 2002, suggests that the real purpose of sustainable development is to contain and limit economic development in developing countries and in so doing, control population growth. It is suggested that this is the reason the main focus of most programs is still on low-income agriculture. Joan Weon, 2004, a businesswoman, an international reporter, who covered 64 global meetings on sustainable development, posits that Sustainable development has continued to evolve as that of protecting the world's resources while its true agenda is to control the world's resources. It should be noted that Agenda to One sets up the global infrastructure needed to manage, count, and control all of the world's assets. Sustainable development is set to set limits on the developing world. While current first world countries polluted significantly during their development, the same countries encourage third world countries to reduce pollution, which sometimes impedes growth. Some consider that the implementation of sustainable development would mean a reversion to pre modern lifestyles. In fact, all these broad aspects together give us an idea of the scope of sustainable development development. In order to understand the scope of sustainable development in its Malay perspective, let us discuss its dimensions principles and concerns in the following section. 1.3 Scope of Sustainable Development Sustainable development is viewed as the mutually beneficial interaction between the legitimate interests of business and the economy, government and the polity, and civil, society and culture. However, these societal interactions do not exist in a vacuum. 
On the physical and material side, society is bounded by the carrying capacity of the varied ecosystems, landscape ecology, and ultimately the biosphere of the earth or the nature. On the psychological and spiritual side, the threefold functional differentiation of society is contextualized by the caring capacity of individuals. Thus, sustainable development is a multidimensional concept involving no less than four dimensions, 1.3.1 dimensions of sustainable development. Basically, sustainable development has four main pillars, dimensions, social, economic, environmental, and institutional. However, in recognition of the growing importance of information and communication technologies and the role they play in development, a fifth dimension IICT is added. This integration of social, economic, environmental, institutional, and ICT is an imperative widely recognized by the community. Following are brief definitions of these dimensions. 1.3.1.1 Social Dimension The imperative of the 21st century is sustainability, to raise the living standards of the world's poor and to achieve and maintain high levels of social health among the affluent nations while simultaneously reducing and reversing the environmental damage wrought by human activity. Sustainability issues are generally expressed in scientific and environmental terms, but implementing change is a social challenge that entails, among other things, international and national law, urban planning and transport, local and individual lifestyles, and ethical consumerism. Development is considered to be socially sustainable when it achieves social justice via equitable resource allocation, eradicates poverty and provides social r emphasis such as education, health, etc. to all members of the society, especially the innost needy ones. The social dimension of sustainable development is thus based on a notion that man constitutes an important means of development and its prime target should be to strive to achieve this notion for both present and the future generations. Ipsial sustainability is one aspect of sustainable development. Social sustainability, i. Dampasses human rights, labor rights and corporate governance. In common with, r. Environmental s. Till the sustainability till the social sustainability is the idea that future generations should have the same or greater access to social resources as the current generation. Social resources include ideas as broad as basic human rights and all other cultures. 1.3.1.2 Economic Dimension Economically, sustainability means providing economic welfare to people at present and in the future, while paying more attention to the natural capital. It means and includes the natural resources of economic value, considered as the basis for the economic system, such as plants, soil, animals, fish, and bioenvironmental system, such as air and water purification, sustainability, thus, interfaces with economics through the social and ecological consequences of economic activity. Sustainability economics represents a broad, Interpretation of ecological economics where environmental and ecological variables and issues are basic but part of a multidimensional perspective. Social, cultural, health-related and monetary financial aspects have to be integrated into the analysis. However, the concept of sustainability is much broader than the concepts of sustained yield of welfare, resources or profit margins. At present, the average per capita consumption of people in the developing world is sustainable but population numbers are increasing and individuals are aspiring to high-consumption Western lifestyles. The developed world population is increasing only slightly but consumption levels are unsustainable. The challenge for sustainability is to curb and manage Western consumption while raising. The standard of living of the developing world without increasing its resource depletion and environmental impact. This must be done by using strategies and technology that break the link between economic growth on the one hand and on the other, environmental damage and resource depletion, 
1.3.1.3 Environmental Dimension An ecologically sustainable system maintains a solid base of natural resources and avoids excessive use of such resources. This involves the conservation of biodiversity, attaining atmospheric balance, productivity of soil as well as other systems of natural environment, which are usually classified as non-economic resources. In tackling sustainable development problems, environmentalists tend to focus on what is known as environment borders. As a concept, it means that each natural environment system has certain limits that should not be exceeded by excessive consumption or else a deterioration in natural system is irrevocable and inevitable. Therefore, from an environmental point of view, sustainability means setting limits for consumption, population growth, pollution and the faulty ways of production including wasting waters, cutting the forests or erosion of the soil, healthy ecosystems provide vital goods and services to humans and other organisms, there are two major ways of reducing negative human impact and enhancing ecosystem services. I. Environmental management. This direct approach is based largely on information gained from earth science, environmental science, and conservation biology. However, this is ultimately the management of a long series of indirect, causal factors that are initiated by human consumption, so a second approach is through demand management of human resource use, to management of human consumption of resources, it is an indirect approach, based largely on information gained from economics. Harman Dali, 1973, has suggested three broad criteria for ecological sustainability. Renewable resources should provide a sustainable yield, the rate of harvest should not exceed the rate of regeneration. For non-renewable resources there should be equivalent development of renewable substitutes and waste generation should not exceed the assimilative capacity of the environment. 1.3.1.4 Institutional Dimension The institutional dimension of sustainable development is concerned with the participation of all community members in the decision-making process and the acquisition of the information that affects their lives transparently and accurately. It is also concerned with the organizations such as councils and committees charged with the implementation of various aspects of Millennium Development Goals, MDGs.1.3.1.5 Digital ICT Dimension Information and Communication Technologies, ICTs, are closely related to the above-mentioned four dimensions of sustainable development. The Millennium Development Goals and the Recommendations of the International Summit for Information and Communication Technology held in Geneva in November 2003 provided a suitable methodological framework on how to make use of ICT in achieving sustainable development. Therefore, the digital dimension has been added as a fifth dimension of sustainable development. 1.3.2 Principles Premises of Sustainable Development Some of the principles underlying the concept of sustainable development include the following. 1. Sustainable development is an alternative design for development, which, by definition, should be environmentally benign and eco-friendly. 2. That the present generation should meet its needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs, i.e. to ensure that the productive assets available to future generations are not unfairly diminished. 3. That those who enjoy the fruits of economic development today must not make future generations worse off by excessively degrading the Earth's exhaustible resources and polluting its ecology and environment. 4. That there is a symbiotic relationship between the consumerist human race and producer, natural systems. 5. That environment and development are not mutually exclusive healthy. Environment is essential to sustainable development and healthy economy as well. 6. That economic development which erodes natural capital is often not successful. 7. That environmental mistakes of the past need not be repeated as the past patterns of environmental degradation are not inevitable. 8. That development is not growth only, 
it should stand for broader goals of social transformation. 9. That sustainable development in the long run has to do with ecology, resources, and people, along with their service agencies, institutions, and other aspects of their social organization. 10. That sustainable development has two major aspects. Internally sustainable development and externally sustainable development without both, no real sustainable development would exist. 11. That sustainable development is largely accountable to the poor, and hence, it should ensure that the poor have adequate access to sustainable and secure livelihoods. 1.3.3 Sustainable Development Concerns and Ingredients of Good Vision We need to articulate and address our concerns of sustainable development with a good vision thereof. So, in this section, we will focus on our concerns and also elucidate our vision of sustainable development so that our approaches and strategies thereof may home meaningful in achieving such a development. 1.3.3.1 Nature of our concerns of sustainable development We are now clear that sustainable development is not a newfound revelation. It is, however, true that more recent discussions on it are the result of the Rio Conference in 1992 which provided a blueprint for moving towards an alternative vision of development that represents the coming together of different concerns. After Rio, declaration, known as Earth Charter, we have started becoming more serious in our discussions and debate which seek to establish a basis in principle for guiding the state in formulating sustainable development policies that balance environmental safeguards with the satisfaction of human needs in contemporary times. With the coming of the concept of sustainable development, the development debate is not dominated by economists alone. It has other participants to the environmentalists, the sociologists, and a host of citizen groups who are playing their role in the development arena. The current concern for sustainable development is rooted in the FM realization that the bounties of nature are drying up and there is going likely to be an acute scarcity of basic resources. The rampage of technology has killed the feeling of continued abundance, the folly of reckless environmental degradation is finally being realized, and the elitist, techno-economic model of development is being increasingly questioned. The environmentalists parade the frightening facts and warn us that no issue seems to be more central and vital today than the protection of the environment. If timely action is not taken the time will run out, and we will sit on an ash pile of degraded environment, five critiques of development, also ling the alarming bells, not only for conveniently ignoring the environmental considerations in the development planning but also for the distortions of development, i. unjust and inequitable development. The facts they, critiques, Present are highly disturbing, more than 200 million people in the country live below the poverty line. More than 200 million people have no access to safe drinking water. More than 500 million people have no access to proper sanitation. More than 150 million people are without proper shelter. More than 500 million people are illiterate. More than a million children die each year before they see their first birthday. In the face of such a grim scenario, the question development for whom needs an honest answer. There is no place here to present a detailed critique of development, but at least a one-line statement is necessary that development has failed the poor, and they need a development which is participatory, equitable, and infused with strong considerations of social justice. Labels of such a development sustainable or whatever do not matter to the poor. What matters to them is the equitability, call it sustainability, if one likes, this is the backdrop that constitutes really the concerns of the current debates and discussions on sustainable development. The concerns are essentially related to global and transnational nature of threats, for example, climate change, ozone, layer depletion, etc., degradation of natural habitats, for example, forests and other ecosystems, a depletion of non-renewable natural resources, for example, stock of water, soil, minerals, 
wilderness areas, diminution of land for agricultural purposes, migration of people from rural to urban areas, pollution of rivers, ponds and other water sources, and environmental pollution in urban industrial areas, especially in large cities, 1.3.3.2 essential ingredients of good vision of sustainable development. Towards a good the current explorations on sustainable development in our bits today exemplify an approach that will permit continuing improvements in the present qualify of life at a lower intensity of resource use, thereby leaving behind for future generations an undiminished or even enhanced stock of natural resources and other assets. The search is basically on for that process of development by which people develop themselves and their institutions in ways that enhance their ability to mobilize and manage available resources to produce sustainable and justly distributed improvements in the quality of life consistent with their own aspirations. For us, in India, sustainable development is both a challenge and an opportunity. The obstacles are, however, Great and making the concept of sustainability precise is difficult. It is not possible to argue that there should be zero or bare minimum use of natural resources for development. Successful development will inevitably involve some amount of depletion of natural resources, resulting in some degree of environmental damage. Further, policies and programs of accelerating environmentally responsible development will not happen by themselves. It is, therefore, important to seize the current opportunity to bring about real, if not radical, change. The challenge can be converted into opportunity when due consideration is given to its essential ingredients that determine our vision of sustainable development, ingredients of good vision. Some ingredients identified are presented below. 1. Recognizing the complementarity of economic development and sound environmental L management, economic development and sound environmental management are complementary aspects of the same agenda. World Bank, 1992, P.25 Without adequate environmental protection, development will be undermined and, without development, environmental protection will fail. Across the globe, there is growing consensus that policies of both economic growth and Environmental management are not much in conflict with each other, they are more often complementary. Good economic policies are good environment policies and vice versa, says World Development Report, 1992. Economic growth need not be an enemy of environment and the best policies for environmental protection will help not hurt economic development, World Bank, 1992. P. 178. Dot, planning and providing for the basic needs of the poor. For the poor, environment is an integral part of development. In their impoverished state, the poor depend on the environment for their livelihood and sustenance. With few assets on which they can draw upon, the poor have no choice but to excessively degrade natural resources. They have to meet their urgent, short-term needs by preying upon the natural resources available in their surrounding environment. They care more about extracting what they can do today from environmental resources than about conserving them for tomorrow. The result is often the very opposite of sustainability with excessive exploitation of their natural habitat in the process of meeting their basic needs through overexploitation of natural resources. The poor become both the victims and agents of environmental damage. The viral poor resort to cultivating erosion-prone landsides and moving into tropical forest. Areas where crop yields on cleared fields usually drop sharply after a few years. They mine natural capital through, for example, excessive felling of trees for firewood, polluting rivers and ponds, and overusing some of the exhaustible and non-renewable natural resources. While the basic needs of the poor are partly Met by excessive exploitation of natural resources within their reach, the poor usually bear the brunt of environmental degradation. They may also be the ones who suffer most when forests, which provide them free fuel and cattle feed are logged, or when factories pollute rivers that provide them water, 
fish, etc. The poor, in this process, becomes the victims of their own as well as other people's damage to environment. To make development sustainable, what is therefore required is strong poverty alleviation strategy that meets the basic needs of the poor, called safety net, and empower them in a manner which reduces their direct dependence on natural resources. Alleviating poverty is both a moral, imperative and a requisite for environmental sustainability, World Bank, 1992, p.30, and there exist substantial synergies between alleviating poverty and protecting environment, 3. Dovetailing development plotting with measures aimed at population, control, like poverty, MPID population growth is a serious constiller aimed to sustainable development. Population growth offsets development gains. It exacerbates the mutually reinforcing effects of poverty aid environmental damage. Rapid population growth puts too much pressure on precious natural resources like water, air, energy, forests, land and ecology. Population growth also increases the demand for goods and services and thus implies increased use of natural resources that cause environmental damage. More people not only consume more resources but also produce more wastes, threatening local health conditions and putting additional stress on MS assimilative capacity. In our context, the issue of population control is of fundamental importance if planning for sustainable development is to make much headway. Without population control sustainable development is neither possible nor feasible, however great may be the efforts for making considerations of social justice enter into strategies of sustained economic growth, equity and social justice are award objectives of sustainable development. It is in the backdrop of this objective that sustainable development has been viewed as a development with a humane face, a development that humanizes rather than dehumanizes. It has also been viewed as a development that puts the last first. In short, sustainable development is equitable development, the development that does not bypass the poor and does not deceive the disadvantaged. It is the development that takes due care of the weakest and the most deprived, a development that is economically more just, more humane and that which promotes human welfare. Sustainable Development As Gale, 1991, p.230, argues is three-pronged construct economic construct, environmental, construct and social construct. As a social construct, it, among other things, implies the following, that access to resources and the distribution of costs and benefits must be fair and equitable to both the rich and the poor, e that development must be appropriate to the status and concerns of the local people, especially for those living in conditions of extreme marginality, and that the decision-making should be participatory, liberating, collaborative, arid, consensus-building. Else these three conditions are to be met, the considerations of social justice should effectively enter into the formulation and implementation of strategies aimed at sustainable development, which, by all means, is a socially infused development, talking and taking care of those who presently stand disillusioned at the current pace and processes of industrial, technical or economic growth, WHLCH is capitalistic, in character and elitist in its approach. The only sobering conclusion is that as long as economic development does not become equitably distributive development, it cannot maintain its sustainability. 5. Attending to problems created by accelerated pace of industrialization and urbanization, while there is a lot of breast beating on sustainable development in the quarters that play a major role in the planning and execution of economic growth and industrial expansion. There is little regard to attending to the problems arising out of the pace and processes of industrial growth. Also, while there is no dispute about the need for industrialization, the cause of worry is the environmental degradation on a frightening scale. The industrial units, no matter big or small, are polymed in nature. 
most of these units flout the regulatory controls with impunity and care little about the problems of pollution they create in the short and long run. The obsession with growth-oriented strategy has sidetracked the vital issues of environmental protection and desirable modes of production. Besides problems of pollution, there is another awesome problem of industrial growth. Namely, the problem of project displaced persons, PDPs. There are many instances of development projects, factories, mines and dams that have resulted in bringing untold misery to poor people whose land has been acquired in the name of public interest without paying adequate market price. The ousted are always those people for whose interests nobody cares. The pet argument is that displacement and human sacrifices are always unavoidable in economic development. The mad rush to cities, i.e. the menacing pace of urbanization, the booming of cities and towns, has created mounting problems of sewage disposal, environmental, sanitation, scarcity of space, paucity of safe drinking water, congestion on roads, sprouting of big slums and squatter colonies, large number of motor vehicles causing deafening noise and immense air pollution, and conversion of agricultural lands into habitation lands. The crisis of cities is growing each day and the pattern of urbanization seems frightening. There are no easy answers to the twin problems of industrialization and urbanization. These are linked with different models of growth that we have pursued in the past five decades. The Gandhian strategy of economic development may perhaps provide a solution. If that be so, robust revival of village-based small and medium cottage industries and highest priority to rural development seem to be the promising areas of planning for sustainable development. 1.4 Summary During the past 20 years, there has been a growing realization that the present practices of development are unsustainable in nature. In other words, we are living beyond our normal means. The loss of biodiversity due to felling of rainforests, overfishing to the captive effect, our consumption patterns, etc., is impacting our environment and climate. Our way of life is placing an increasing burden on the planet with a great stress or sustainability of development though sustainable development means different things to different people the widely accepted, most frequently quoted international definition of sustainable development is from the report A Common Future also known as the Brundtland. Report sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromises the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. But, surprisingly, Globally, we are not even meeting the just needs of the present in just manner, let alone considering the needs of future generations. Sustainable development focuses on improving the quality of life of all of the Earth's citizens without increasing the use of natural resources beyond the capacity of the environment to supply them indefinitely. It requires an understanding that inaction has consequences and that we must find innovative ways to change institutional structures and influence individual behavior. It is about taking action, changing policy and practice at all levels, from the individual to the international. Sustainable development is not a new idea. Many cultures over the course of human history have recognized the need for harmony between the environment, society and economy. What is new is an articulation of these ideas in the context of a global, industrial, and information society. Progress on developing the concept of sustainable development has been rapid since the 1980s. In 1992, leaders at the Earth Summit built upon the framework of Brundtland report to create agreements and conventions on critical issues such as climate change, desertification, and deforestation. They also drafted a broad action strategy agenda, 21 as the work plan for environment and development issues for the coming decades, throughout the rest of the 1990s regional and sectoral sustainability plans have been developed. A wide variety of groups ranging from businesses to municipal governments to international organizations such as the World Bank have adopted the concept and given it their own particular interpretations. 
These initiatives have increased our understanding of what sustainable development means within many different contexts. Unless we start to make real progress towards reconciling these contradictions we face, a future that is less certain and less secure. We need to make a decisive move toward more sustainable development. Not just because it is the right thing to do, but also because it is in our own long-term best interests. It offers the best hope for the future, and whether at school, in the home or at work. We all have a part to play. Our small, everyday actions add up to make a big difference, are you in this regard? Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.